Frederick Weiss. Oh boy, uh, the worst, the worst uh, draft pick in Knicks history, which is saying a lot. That is saying a Frederick lot. Weiss. He got drafted by the Knicks. Yeah, <laughs> our test went one before him. him. Yeah. Wait, the Knicks, one who? Yeah. Knicks. Wait, Vin, the, the guy yeah. Vince dunked on. Knicks yeah. drafted him. That was their draft. How pick. long ago? 2000? No, earlier than that. Earlier than that? So, Ron Artest got selected by the Bulls one pick ahead. Yikes. So, like, Knicks fans are getting, getting hyped for Artest staying in the city and, like, you know, being at Cornerstone. And then, fu- then fucking Bulls picked him. And then goddamn Frederick Weiss, who didn't pay, play one NBA game or go to a training camp with the Knicks, was picked. And, and also, his claim to fame is getting dunked on by. But also, is that why he didn't come to the NBA? Because he got dunked on by. No, he was just garbage. Welcome back to Out of Bounds. I'm Pierce Simpson. I'm joined here, as always, by Complex Sports Editor Adam Caparillo. Adam, are you in mourning today? It's a dark day in New York. It's a dark day. In, <laughs> it's, a dark, it's a dark day. Next to Adam Caparillo is Mr. Gilbert Arenas. Gilbert, you, you seem joyful today, despite his doom and gloom over there. I'm just happy to be alive, brother. Hey, I'm with it. Positivity, <laughs> you know, beaming right now. Um, big news in the association last night, depending on who you root for. Could be a dark day. Could be, you know, just a normal day in the NBA. What are you, a Philly fan? You're rooting for <laughs> I know. I, was gonna say, right? I, came, I came out kind of funky. I came out kind of funky. But uh, Chris Porzingis went down with a torn ACL during the Knicks 103-89 loss to the Milwaukee Bucks. Obviously, a lot of Knicks fans in despair because their franchise player is down for the season. There's no telling when he could come back. What are your initial thoughts on KP going down with such a significant injury? When he dunked it and I seen the the knee cave in, I was like, ooh. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Please no ACL. Yeah. And then you get the reports ACL. For a big guy. It's tough, I mean, right? That, that, I mean, that's tough for a big guy, especially since he's athletic too. Yeah. But, you know, he can pull into the Dirk. You know, that Dirk role, you know, coming into next year until yeah. he get his legs under him. But, I mean, it's, you know, they say an ACL injury is an 8- to 12-month injury, and yeah. every guy's a little bit different. But we've never seen an athletic big like that 7-3 that can move around, that can be nimble, that has that agility yeah. come back from a major injury like this. So this is devastating for a 22-year-old kid that was an all-star caliber. Well, no, all-star this year yeah. for the first time. Mm-hmm. Really coming to his prime. The Knicks have built everything around him. And now going into his fourth year, you kind of have a lot of uncertainty. And the Knicks now hopefully will go in full tank mode and hopefully get a better draft pick. But, like, this really muddies the waters of what at times was a decent Knicks season, but it was kind of coming off the rails recently. But this is just like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, this, really? this, this hurts. This, it, there's a curse up there. It, <laughs> Well, there, there, no, you, go that well far. It, you know, it starts up top. Of, we'll, we'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we won't talk about that for right now. If there is so much uncertainty with Chris Stapps and his health and what he can do, is it time to maybe kick the tires on a potential trade scenario for KP? No. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Hell no. Right. Hell no. You're trying to get lynched, boy. But, okay, there, here's there, my thing. Here's my <laughs> thing. <laughs> the only yeah. thing Knicks fans have going for them right now yes. is Porzingis, okay? The, the Knicks fans about to be after You're talking about trade him now? Boy. Yes. You will, oh my Do you know how God. much Knicks fans love Porzingis? Because y'all are tortured. It's a torture. Well, pretty much, yes. I it's mean, it's low-hanging franchise. fruit, but, like, that's the only thing Knicks fans have to hang on to. Here's my thing with Porzingis, right? They wanted to monitor his minutes throughout the season. He's, from the start of the year, he played excellent. Then he started to tell off as we get close and close to the All-Star break. He's been wearing down. We even had a complex sports feature on is Porzingis wearing down. Then he ends up tearing his ACL. We've never seen a big guy, like you said, athletic. Mm-hmm. What is he, 7'3"? Yep. Recover from ACL injury. People think it's an 8- to 12-month injury as somebody that's torn their ACL. It's really a two-year process because that first year coming back, you're just trying to yeah. work into things, get your mental right. So let's say year six for him is when he'll start coming back. Why not ship him out now? Because load, work, but it's a loaded, it's a loaded draft. There's somebody out there that would give it. The Phoenix Suns wouldn't give you their first round pick this year for Chris Porzingis. No, not game. if you're gonna, you're not gonna use him for another two years. Hypothetically, he could be back in eight to twelve months. No, no. Nick, Knicks are all in on Porzingis with with Phil Jackson mercifully giving the boot or thankfully giving the boot <laughs> by by Dolan and and everyone uh, last June. Knicks are all in on Porzingis. They mended the relationship that got really torn apart at the end of last year. So he is the franchise. You do everything to appease him and make him if it takes get back two years, to health. It takes two, it takes two years. years. You have to. I mean, because again, he's the unicorn. He's twenty two. No one else like him in the NBA. That's that's very true. But who's to say he'll return to that form once he? It doesn't matter. He's twenty two. I mean, he's going to come back 24. He's still. Hey, real quick. He's real still quick, Real quick. Derrick Rose is 22 when he kind of tore his ACL. In. Different players, though. Different yeah, it's players. different. One, but they were one both unicorns in, in their respective yeah, nah. Rose more more built on explosiveness. Yeah. I mean, you he, know. He needs again. his. So he need, I mean, you know, Rose is more of a yeah. side to side player, so he needed. 
his ACL more than Porzingis. <laughs> he does. I mean, but Porzingis is the most skilled big man athletically we've seen maybe mm-hmm. ever in the NBA. So, yes, it, it bears watching how you return from that. But he, it's not like Derrick Rose's situation. So you can morph your game a little bit. Maybe be more of a local. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt a little him bit. Well, obviously, I'm the Bill Belichick and Danny Ainge of the group because I will be kicking the tires on potential trade packages. What can I get for Bazingas at this point? Yeah. Because there's a lot of uncertainty right now. Do you but want New Yorkers to burn the garden down? He would have been, he would have been fired. And <laughs> no, 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 because no, 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 we saw y'all drafting Billy when we did the All Star special. Hey, um, better than LeBron apparently, because all his players are falling by the wayside. That's what I was about to say. John Wall's injured. Kevin Love. Porzingis, DeMarcus Cousins, all on Team LeBron. Is he cursed at this point? Like, he's having a year from Well, Boy, that's Team LeBron, LeBron. My Team LeBron is, I'm only missing two players. Yes, <laughs> I'm only missing two. <laughs> it was like, my hypothetical team missing. is fine. I didn't have love. <laughs> <laughs> One of my deep reserves. So, I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. Team Steph is doing better than Team LeBron right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, that is hilarious. In that same game, Giannis Antetokounmpo went off. We kind of talked about in the code open about him jumping over Tim Hardaway Jr. You jump over me, there might be a fist fight on the court. But aside from that, the NBA has final Los Angeles. This Lakers fifty thousand dollars for Magic Johnson, giving Giannis Antetokounmpo high praise during the ESPN interview. Magic spoke about how someday Giannis will be MVP and could lead the Bucks to a championship. And specifically, he said, "Probably the greatest athlete we have in the league today." The Bucks then took that comment that Magic Johnson said, put it on their Instagram account, praising Giannis and praising the words of Magic Johnson, only to file a tampering charge with the NBA. Is this what you think about this situation for the Bucks? Is this petty for them to? Oh, no, that's charge. fair. How is it fair to file a tampering charge when you praise the comments that Magic Johnson you said praise, on your very own social media? You're account. praising so everyone can see what Magic Johnson is doing. <laughs> but then I remember when I like when, when I seen the comment, I commented, "Tampering." <laughs> but why is it tampering so if you're petty. just praising? Be- okay, because big market teams, that's their advantage over the Bucks, the Milwaukee's, the Bobcats. That all the free agents want to go to big markets. Yeah. So when you have this 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 freak up in Milwaukee, knowing he's not going to win a fucking championship, he's never going to win an MVP over there because they're never going to have a team good enough to do any of those. So if you're Magic Johnson, you are praising the guy at some point. Yeah. I'm trying to lure you. Come on over to the... You, to the sunshine, yeah, baby. You don't need to do any of that. Exactly. You're the you Lakers. You're but, LA. but if you're if you're a player and Magic Johnson just told you you're the best guy in the NBA and you'll win an MVP, you're like, Magic said it. Magic said it. So if you ever have any beef, any beef with the Bucks, who's the first person you think about? Maybe. Magic Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, hasn't the NBA seen Magic's Twitter feed in the past? Yeah. Like his elementary analysis of the NBA? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, so but, why would you go true. crazy? But, but now he's in a higher position where he can make trades and, and go after players. So if you're in that type of position, you can't say shit. Yeah, yeah but the NBA tampering rule is kind of BS. Like, so the Constitution of the NBA in Article 35A says that no person may directly or indirectly entice, induce, persuade, or attempt to entice any player who is under contract to or whose exclusive negotiating rights are held by another member of the association. How did he do that? Told him he Like, was... say indirectly, yeah. I mean, yes. if you want to, like, make some stupid path to that. But, like, he didn't do any recruiting. So if, you, if, you're, if you're walking with your girlfriend... <laughs> And the dude be like, ooh, oh, you got a nice going? ass. Good job, dude. That's, that's tampering? Yes. Because you're going to be like, it's yeah, a compliment. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, a compliment. it's a compliment to you and your girl getting a fight. And then she's going to be like, yeah, that dude did say my ass looks nice. <laughs> How is he doing? Maybe you don't want to be with you know? if, she's, if she's swayed by those kind of comments. You know, so, you know what's crazy? He makes a ton of sense. <laughs> put it that way. Um, Maddie Johnson was also fined half a million dollars back in August for his comments pertaining to Paul George. So totally, tampering again. Oh, totally. But that was actually but that was, tampering. That was, that was really behind the scenes He's sending tampering. out his little recruiting. He's sending out his little recruit. You don't have Magic. to, though. Yeah, you do. So is Magic Johnson a problem at this point when you've been fined $550,000 in less than a year? Not if you get those players. Then it was worth it. He's gotten none of them. Not, not right now, but in the future, if you get those players, it was worth it. So you're just saying it's just like a it's, a... it's an investment. Okay. I'm mean, investing I'm investing in other players out there. So you can write off this on your taxes <laughs> yeah, yeah. for 2018? Yeah. Who, who did it? You remember when uh, Phil Jackson did that? Have you noticed there's always the Lakers program? That's a good point. When yeah. Phil did that to uh, Chris Bosh? Have you also noticed that who was a terrible GM <laughs> and executive? Right. Phil Jackson. And can we also talk about how the Lakers have gotten none of those free agents? What's the last big Phil free agent the Lakers zero. have gotten? Uh, Dwight Howard. No, that was a trade. Yeah. And he left. <laughs> Zero. 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 Nobody. But, 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 it, no, it's Jack. not. It's because the, the, it's designed. 
the way the league is now is designed for the player not to leave his hometown. Yeah, because you can get more money by you can staying get, you, with you the can Super get Max more money. Or the rights and everything like that. Yeah, yeah so you can get more money. So it's designed where free agents don't supposed to leave. So it's going to be hard for, for, for any team to get free agents unless they just say, fuck this team, I'm out. But is it, is it paranoia for the Milwaukee Bucks to hear the praise from Magic Johnson and still file tampering charges? That's the part that gets me. No, Because uh, you, you want to have it both ways. You, you acknowledge the fact that Magic gave high praise to your superstar and franchise player. You even embrace it on social media. But then you go behind the scenes to file a tampering charge. But, I mean, if you're, if you're Milwaukee, you know at some point you're not going to have the Greek for five, you know, five more years from now. But even if you throw two hundred plus million dollars, exactly. yeah, you're gonna throw the two hundred plus, and then at some point he's gonna want to trade. He wants to. He's gonna want to win. But then you're gonna get multiple draft picks for him. Yeah. So why not throw the two hundred million at him? With you're gonna new, throw. Have a new arena coming soon. But I'm yeah. saying you're gonna throw the two hundred million. Then he's gonna want to win. I want to win now. I can't just sit here every year winning thirty games. Yeah, but you know, the, you know, is the fourth choice in the Eastern Conference according to Vegas right now? Milwaukee Bucks. Bucks. Oh, yeah. Man. What, what was that noise? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, as I said, it's about, it's about winning, you know, and, and you reporters always <laughs> emphasize winning at some point. So, yeah, yeah he's cool now, but three years, three years from now, he's doing the same thing, but he's not, he's not capitalizing on winning. He's going to get killed. We need, we need a uh, shot to cap counter <laughs> this week because Miko got you first. Now Gil hit you, you with a side, side eye cam. Oh, that side eye was <laughs> legendary. Sales, can you hook that up, please? <laughs> All right, switching gears a little bit, we need to deconstruct the Derrick Rose shoe deal that came out the other day. This is Secure the Bag. All right, so in a Sports Illustrated piece the other day by John Wertheim, he got a hold of Derrick Rose's shoe contract with Adidas, and it was kind of revealing for multiple reasons, uh, because usually these things never leak, and you never get a chance to you know peel behind the scenes and take a look at what the the actual deal is. But um, it's reported to be worth $185 million over 14 years, which is an astronomical number off the bat, and obviously taking into account everything that we've seen with Derrick Rose. Um, The player-friendly contract included some of the following perks. Annual retainers of $12 million per season, from the 2012-13 season until this past season. And this year he's entitled to $11 million. Annual royalties of up to $6.25 million and as much as $4.8 million in annual appearance fees and the use of a private plane. And then Derek Rose's older brother is paid between $250,000 and $300,000 to be a consultant, whatever that means, and just other perks and other things about, you know, Adidas pledging money to charities and AAU teams. Um, and there's also some very interesting clauses that would nullify and also give deductions for Rose failing to make all-star teams and missing games, but Adidas has chosen not to, you know, exercise those clauses. Yeah. So, I, you know, we could dissect this for, like, the entire show and just peel this, you know, different layers, but I guess I'll start first and foremost asking Gil, how crazy is it that Derrick Rose is still making this much money from Adidas when they seemingly had a chance to dial it back or maybe even get out from it? Yeah. Uh, the way the contract was done was they didn't have any leverage over Derrick at that point. Um, you know, in youngest, when, they, when they signed it back. When they signed it, yeah. youngest MVP, yeah. you know, he's the hottest thing moving right now. So Derrick had all the leverage. And, you know, you, you can tell, you know, his brother's getting money, his – his uh, best friend is getting money. You know, he, he bulletproofed this this contract to the point where if anything ever did happen to him, you can't do shit. Yeah. So, you know, you fast forward to now, they're stuck with their hands yeah. up their ass because they can't get off the contract. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure that when he was up for that uh, that charge, that they were praying that he got convicted so they can get off this contract. I'm, I'm 100% sure. Because... Through my calculations, just this, through this year alone with the royalties, the appearance fees, the actual salary, the payment to Reggie Rose and his other friend, that's well over $20 million that, yes. that Adidas is shelving out to the Rose. And, and then, family. I mean, I don't know if, you, if, if it has it in there, but as long as he's in the NBA, as long as he steps foot on a team, he gets the signature shoe. Which is crazy. And is that, go, is that tied into the royalties also? Is that what the royalties No, that's, that's different. So what do you mean? So he just gets the six and a half. So he gets, yes, he gets the six. So he gets a, a signature shoe every year he's in a league. So and then his sign, the way he did the deal is you have to push it more than any other athlete. So now you have James Harden and Dame Leonard who are above him. Yeah. But his his shoe gets 
pushed in front of yeah. there. It's crazy that he's going to make $15 million more million this year from Adidas than yeah. he is actually being an NBA player with this contract with the Cavs. It's he's amazing. making the league minimum, veterans minimum, $2.1 million, and he's getting you know almost 13 And then at, and at, and at 29, at 29, he can – at 29 – He's not going anywhere. Yeah. Mm. He's making, so Adidas is going to pay him 8.5 next year, and then the 19 20 season is making 6.5. That follow that for a couple more seasons, and then basically the contract doesn't end until 2025 season. So and do the math gonna, on how old he's going to be then. And he's still going to make $5 million. The annual minimum royalty payment during those years will be at least $6 million. So he's going to be netting almost 10 to 11, if not $12 million yeah. through the 2025 season. That's amazing. Shout and out to his agent. Hey, yeah. hey, unless they start paying teams not to pick his ass up. <laughs> uh, yeah. And again, they also that, that contract that he signed was not signed by Derrick Rose. It was signed by Limited Liability Corporation. Yep. So tax for tax purposes too, yes. to you know, to not have to pay the penalties of just being and an the only way the only way they get off that contract is if he commits a felony. But I mean, they, you know, you, they seemingly had some outs and abilities based on playing time, and also yeah, maybe the accusations. No, but, but, didn't but they didn't. But they didn't have. They didn't have it in their contract. It, it's not there. So you like they, he don't have. Re, he doesn't have reductions in his contract. Like if he, as long as he steps a foot, day one, boom, signature. So shot. those clauses. One game. So those clauses is usually in everyone's contract. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't in his. So how they get away with not having one? They didn't have any leverage. They didn't have nothing to go off of. You know, you have the hottest thing moving. There's nothing. Like, I want to see LeBron's contract. I guarantee you, y'all look at that. It's like, what the fuck is this? Listen, whenever they... bombshell. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> when they don't disclose the details, that's how you know. Yeah, because you, I'm pretty sure in his is he has to always be the highest paid. So, with his contract, I'm sure with his group, let's say Kevin Durant gets $25 million. That means if... The way LeBron's contract would be would be done is he automatically gets a raise. Yep. No matter what, him doing nothing, he automatically gets a raise because he has to be the highest paid. LeBron signed the lifetime deal that Maverick Carter said is allegedly worth a billion dollars over his lifetime. Yeah. Kevin Durant re-upped, I believe, in 2013 or 14 when Under Armour was pursuing him for over 300 million dollars. You know, Nike gave him that. So yeah. So that's what I'm saying. If if you have a, something in your contract that that keeps pushing you up without you doing anything. That's just smart. That's just smart business. I guess the only question I have is that with this contract being released like this and other Adidas athletes that, you know, have partnered with the company and seeing all the perks that that Derrick Rose has gotten and maybe going back to the negotiating table, like how is that going to affect Adidas' relationship with some of the players going forward? I mean, it, it kind of it, it, it hurts a lot, but you have to be that dude. Yeah. Like, uh, like I'm sure James Harden is going to come back to the table with something crazy. He's got all the leverage. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm pretty sure, especially well, if did he, he, did he sign too soon? Because I believe he signed well over $200 million. a good point. I mean, dollars. was it two summers ago? He yeah. yeah, so yeah. I mean, it all depends. You got to hit it at the right time. You got to be the right player. And D. Rose hit at the right time because he, he hit at the right paid time, yeah. through the 2025 season when he may not even be in the NBA. So maybe that's why. Oh, he no, he going to limp in the NBA. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess I, he has I, to, I, right? He going to keep limping in the yeah. NBA. I don't give a shit with nobody. Yeah. He can say whatever he wants. Ah, it ain't about the money. But shit. think about it. That's another eight, that's shit. eight years. If you're, 37, if you're 37 years old and you can just walk into the NBA and get $11 million, <gasps> What's happening, y'all? I come in all fat and everything. What's happening? <laughs> Give me all this tea. <laughs> What's hilarious is like normally people would use limp as a figure of speech. I know he means it literally. Literally. <laughs> so, what'd you call him earlier this season? Bambi legs? No, Bambi that's, legs. That's, no, it's Brandon Ingram, I thought. Yeah, he's Bambi too. Oh my goodness, goodness gracious. <laughs> he's Bambi Jr. <laughs> he's Bambi Jr. Another, another person that recently signed with Adidas is all-star point guard John Wall. And the Wizards on a five-game winning streak. But John Wall seems to be upset because, one, he's not playing in those games. And his teammates seem to be kind of taking veiled shots at him through social media. Marcin Gortat put this subtweet out there saying, Unbelievable win tonight. Great parentheses. Team victory. John Wall then quote retweeted that, I believe, if that tweet wasn't fake, and put LOL. And... He had some comments that were interesting. He says, I just think if you have a problem with anyone as a man and the principles I stand on, you talk face to face. They have my number. They can see me in person. If we have any discomforts, we can talk. Obviously, it seems like the Wizards are enjoying time with John Wall off the floor, maybe alluding to him not being a team first player and passing a basketball, which I, seems crazy to me. Gil, dissect it. What you think? I hate when star. This is, this is always media driven. Why you say that? Because whenever a team, if a star is out and a team goes on a little winning streak, that 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 one reporter always, hey, do you guys think you're better without such and such? Right. You know, and it all that always happens. And in theory, no, no, you're, the team is not better without their star player. Yeah. Just other players are stepping up. 
You know, so there's other players that normally wouldn't get a chance to get the ball or shine is actually... But that's a narrative you have to ask the players. Why are you guys performing better without seemingly your best player but, on? There's ways of positioning that question, but that question has to be asked to you guys. But, but, but it's, 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 it's not a... It's, it's just like if a coach gets fired, yeah. that, team, that, that team always wins the next two games. It's just one of those things that happens. I think it happened for the Bucs or for the Suns this year. But. Yeah, it did. Remember, Suns blew out the team the, the, but, the very next day. But here's, here's a, great, a great quote <laughs> from John Wall in response to Marcin Gortat's tweet that he said on SC6 that was very, very direct and to the point. He says, it was more just a shock to hear it from him, understanding he gets most assists from me and the most spoon-fed baskets ever. So that's, that's not even a veiled shot. That's actually a shot at Marcin Gortat, who's also on a trading box. See, the theory, the theory of a pure point guard mm-hmm. is they make the team better, right? Yeah. Well, a pure point guard, yes, he makes his teammates better. He doesn't make the star player a score better. So somebody like Bill. Bill doesn't need John Wall. Because Bill can get his own shot. He can score. So he doesn't need John Wall doing pick and roll looking for him. It's like, no, just give me the ball. Let me do my thing. So Bill's numbers will run up because the ball runs through him now because he's now John Wall. But with Gortat and the rest of these guys, you need John Wall to get you the ball because you can't create for yourself. So what's this thing? What's this whole parentheses team victory? Like, what is this? Does he have it? You know what's so funny? That usually, that, that usually doesn't come out from a player like him. It usually came out from a star player who didn't play very well that game. <laughs> <laughs> so when a star player didn't play well yeah. and they won, it's always, oh, good team victory. You know, yeah. you always use that. So if you look through history and look at every time a star player said team victory and look at his numbers, they were actually how many down. How many times you use that? Couple, couple times. Okay, couple. I'm, with it. I'm with it. I think, I, it's, it's, you know, I'm almost to kind of wrap this up. I think this is mostly a case of Marcin, you know, using the media to maybe get himself out of Washington yeah. and quicker. No, they, they, they Why? Probably, He's on the trading block. They probably they really that. believe that they're better without him. Like, I remember when I got hurt, Karan stepped up. But when me and Karan play, me, Karan, and Anton, we, you know, I'm averaging 29, he's averaging 19, Antoine's averaging 20. I got probably 0.5 assists from Karan because Karan was a rhythm player. So when Karan got the ball, you know, it's, he, he had to dance with it, so I never got an assist from him. Yeah. So he didn't need me. So when I was off the floor, he's the man now. He went from 19 to 19.7. <laughs> but <laughs> he's better without me. You know, but that's the theory because they get more touches. You know, sometimes – I don't want you to give me the ball and I got a quick shooter. Just give me, let me do my thing, and that's sometimes. But again, maybe if he's been, if he's heard the rumors, which he obviously has, about him being on the trading block, and there's talk about maybe DeAndre going to Washington and Gortat, Bigman have to go to yeah, LA. Throw, that's one way of helping expedite no, the process so the and throw get the ball out of Washington. The, throw a shot at the, 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 your, the guy who gives you the ball? No. So I, I, I'm surprised they're even throwing shots. Didn't he just buy them Rolex? Exactly. And a great tweet was, maybe they're, maybe the they're ball, a my Rolex. Yeah. <laughs> like, but that's what I'm saying. He's a pass-first guy. But with these pass-first guys, you got to remember, they are ball-dominant because they gotta create, they're trying to create everything. Just like a Chris Paul. Yeah. You know, he's creating all this, so that means he holds the ball a little bit longer. But if, if, if you're the star player and people are saying that they're better without you, from a personal standpoint, how does that make you feel? It fucked up. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't make you feel fucked up, but, like, if Chris Paul went out, right, Mm -hmm. does James Harden, does James Harden go down any in his game? No, he's like, I'm about to score 85. So, you know, James Harden doesn't need Chris Paul. But with Chris Paul in the lineup, are they still undefeated? What do you mean with Clint Capella, Chris Paul? Yeah. They have one loss. They have one loss, but if Chris Paul isn't playing, that team's still rolling. So you can't say Chris Paul is helping or not. You know, it's one of those things where the star player, if you have a, a, a dominant score on your team, he does not actually need a point guard. So they're going to bump heads at some point anyway. Yeah, if I'm management, I'm going to, I'm getting Marcin Gortat out of there as soon as possible. I'm, I'm, I'm I'm pretty, I'm, but I'm pretty sure if these players feel that way about John Wall, mm-hmm. John Wall is probably out of there. Yeah. Wow. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, That's be, why I— Because you got you to talk about—you're talking about— thir- you got to remember, Barrera, Barrera mentioned it. That's why your teammates don't like you. Oh, good uh, point. You remember right. that. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you remember Great that. Point. So— you know, is this something that's n- n- now coming to the light? So John Wall's going to want to – I want out. Listen, here's – Fuck hey, these niggas. Listen. <laughs> Fuck them. That's one way. I just, I just spent 500000 I just spent 500000 on them and that's what they about. say I'm selfish. That might be a write-off like you were saying. Right. <laughs> Before we move on, though, I posed this hypothetical earlier. All I'm saying is there was a lot of rumors 
about LeBron James, John Wall eventually linking up in Los Angeles. You talked about, I would just sign a deal and ask him to trade me later. John Wall signed a deal this offseason. If his teammates hate him, he could just say, hey, trade me to the Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah, he can get, Lakers got a lot of pieces to know what I'm saying. Yeah, he can get traded anywhere because he already has his contract. Exactly. I said, the, 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 so, so signing and training is what all the players want to do. Players don't want to go into free agency. I don't even know why teams trade. Like, stop trading these motherfuckers, for real. Like, you get scared that they're going to leave. You, you're scared that they're going to leave at the free agent? Well, they can get 250 from you. In 125 from somewhere else. You really think, you really think a player's going to make that type of a decision? Fuck no. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. If so he, they want you to sign and trade them. They do not want to go into free agency and actually leave. But they I, get way more money. Answer this home. question, though. Understood, answer this yeah. question, though. If you're the Lakers, present a trade package to the Washington Wizards that may center around Alonzo Ball, potentially Kyle Kuzma, and a pick, would you make that move if you're the Wizards? Would you make that move? If John Wall is that disgruntled, would it you depends. Make that move? Uh, you got to remember, it depends on what you've heard around the league. If you heard LeBron might come here, if you heard Paul George might come here, if you heard Cousins might come here, no, you do not do something stupid now. For who? The Wizards or the Lakers? For the Wizards. You do not trade because those might be pieces that might get those trades done. Yeah, but I'm saying if you're the Lakers at this point, you have nothing. Uh, again. If you have you just Paul, said the Wizards. if you have Paul George, LeBron, Cousins might come here. Yeah, you need pieces to get some of these players, a Kuzma, a Ball, and what. So you don't want to use that now. So you so you're saying that LeBron won't even consider the Lakers if Kuzma, Alonzo Ball is not even there. Why would as he come to John Wall? Why would he come to a younger team? Like if, if LeBron, but if John Wall, if there. LeBron's coming to the Lakers, he's coming with a crew. John Wall, make the trade happen. They're both point guards. LeBron and John Wall? Yes. In theory. But yes. So in theory, they're both point guards. So why would you have two people trying to do the same thing? LeBron is a point. You need a score. And, and who's, who's the other options other than, like, John Wall that's going to team up with him in L.A.? Paul George is our best. Name a, name a first pass point guard LeBron's ever played with. Okay, good job. Here's <laughs> <laughs> what's funny. He didn't give me time to answer. There is no Jose Calderon. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm saying. They, they, you know, LeBron needs the ball in his hand to make plays. So you can't have a playmaker with LeBron. And then the rumors of him going to Houston. So like, what, what is it? At this it's, point? Not, that's, it's not. It's, it's sexy. Not. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah, it's sexy. Yeah, we like sexy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, guess what, guys? Up, We're going to talk some baseball. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's February 7th. We're going to talk right. some baseball. Baseball! Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so the Giants are going to retire Barry Bonds' number this summer, and that's causing some controversy with baseball fans. Um, so the Giants announced that Barry Bonds, who did not egregiously make the Hall of Fame uh, a few weeks ago, will have his number retired. His number 25 will go up and never be worn again. Actually, has been worn since wait, Bonds wait, retired. Wait, 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 wait. Say that again? He didn't, do, he didn't make the Hall of Fame. No. No. Sixth year, sixth year in the ballot, and Bonds has not made the Hall of Fame. He has four more years left to be on the ballot. You're kidding me, right? No, no it's yeah. a national disgrace that Bond's not in the Hall <laughs> oh, of Fame. Oh, that's fucked up. Agreed, yeah. <laughs> Completely. He should be in the Hall of Fame. 1,000%. I don't care if you wow. did steroids, allegedly, or definitively. The Hall of Fame, the Baseball Hall of Fame, number one, is a museum. Yeah. It's not some shrine to, like, you know, the pretty boys. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I, I mean, I know he was a dickhead. 1,000%. To yeah. the writers, yes. To every, yeah, yeah. To, to my ilk. <laughs> but what has that got to do with his, his play? I mean, he's arguably the best baseball player ever. He's the, in my opinion, he's the second best baseball player of all time. Behind who? Babe Ruth. I was scared he was going to say A-Rod. Oh, goodness. A-Rod. Well, A- yeah. <laughs> my nervous. boy A-Rod, maybe third or fourth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's hard to – I mean, it's hard to – like, what is the criteria for them to keep him out? Please don't say steroids. It is. That's because it is. Steroids, that's it. the whole 2000s exactly. with steroids. Yeah, and the other thing that pisses me off is that uh, amphetamines are now banned in baseball. You know what players in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s shovel into their mouth before every single game? Amphetamines. Amphetamines. Yeah. So you have a Hall of Fame that is littered with guys that did drugs that are now considered illegal. And plus, how many guys in the 70s, certainly the 80s, and definitely the 90s, i.e. a Pudge Rodriguez, who was alleged to have done steroids, are in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Guaranteed there are multiple, if not 10 to 20 guys in the Hall of Fame that did illegal substance that are now banned in the game. And just, they're in the Hall of I Fame. I hate when writers get on their moral high horse and want to ban especially a more, like Especially, like, did he get, did he, he didn't even get in, uh, convicted of, just allegedly still. No, he never failed the drug test. Yeah. He was a But, I mean, he but we, a, okay, well, the motherfuckers was on steroids. We know that. Allegedly. Allegedly. No, 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 no. Allegedly. Allegedly. Okay, sure. I get you out sure. of Allegedly. Sure. <laughs> sure. I remember, like, when, when steroids come up, 
Barry Bonds doesn't come to come, come to, to mind. T- he doesn't come to mind. He should McGuire be one of the first did. people that come oh, yeah. to mind. Big Mac did. He admitted it. Yes. Yeah, but see, I was I was part of the Big Mac era. Okay. Yeah. Because. You know, I'm, I'm a Valley kid, mm-hmm. and I was the man here. Okay. I, right? Yeah. I was the man. I was the shit here. <laughs> <laughs> when you're averaging 35 again, I'm the shit here. Let the record show that. So every time, you know, the newspaper opened, I only seen McGuire. <laughs> you know, so, you know, from 96, 97, 98, and 99, all four of my years of dominance, he was dominating. He's outshining you. It, yeah. He so was, that's what pissed I, you off. <laughs> no, no, no. But that's all I knew. So in baseball, that's all I knew yeah. was Big Mac. But you didn't do steroids the way Barry Bonds actually like, did in response to Mark McGuire yeah. outshining. But that's what I'm saying. So you have this guy, you know, doing steroids, killing the league, forces everyone else to do it. Like, I mean, it, it does force. Like, uh, he, yeah. you know, you got to remember, like, if, if I'm more talented than you yeah. at something and you do steroids, you're here. Yeah. Well, for me to go back to where I am, I got to do steroids too. Yeah. Like, it's – if everyone's doing it, no one has an advantage. Yeah, do you guys even care if, like, athletes do steroids at this point? No. no. I don't. But honestly, too, baseball, it made the game more entertaining. I would be curious if the ratings during the steroid era – It was high. Oh, I, I mean, it was high. Great it just, finishes. You can tell who's on steroids. Oh, yeah, because their neck is, like, this big. <laughs> no, 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 no. They just come out of the wolver like McGuire. He leads the league – he led, led the league in 96, 97, 98, 99 in home runs. He was seventh in '95, and didn't exist after. Oh, you going on Baseball Reference? No, 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 no. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and, and then with Barry Bonds, this is like the first Gammons? time you went on that website. Yeah, yeah. but then with, with right. Barry Bonds, he wasn't in the top ten in '95. He was ninth in '96, eighth in '97. Wasn't in top ten in '98. Wasn't in top ten in '99. He was second in 2001 and 2001. Yeah, the, so obviously, motherfucker, you're doing something. Uh, this is impressive to boost research. You, to boost impressive you up research. that much. Are you a baseball insider now? I'm proud. No, no, no. I was because I told you I was part of the Big Mac era. Okay, so Listen, Big Mac. I, Big Mac and salsa. I mean, the you dark salsa. He's gonna have a, the dark salsa, <laughs> not, not the salsa, not that pink got, nigga yeah. I see lately. <laughs> <laughs> not that one. <laughs> you got some baseball roots, though. Not the, not the flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> not him. <laughs> but Bonds, for real talk, Bonds would have been a Hall of Famer even before. I'm sorry, before he did the steroids. Yeah. His his numbers were progressing to a level that was again historical, and it's just sad that the writers are choosing to again be hypocrites and hold this <laughs> against him when yeah. millions of other not millions but plenty of other guys are going to be. Plenty, I mean, the same thing. your top ten, your top ten, probably the top five. Every year, you can say, "I'm ninety percent sure y'all was on steroids." Yeah. yeah. Every year, so I mean, that's that's the Ken Griffey. That's everyone. Yeah. You just, I mean, you, you just can't pick and choose because you didn't like that one because he was a dickhead. Before we wrap up, any NBA guys on steroids? <sighs> I've heard, but it wouldn't be the players you guys would think. It's that it was back back in the early 2000s when they still had that brute four. Like uh, like Danny Fortson and guys like that? Yeah, it'd be. Not saying I'm that not saying Not him, saying that Danny Fortson. But I'm just saying it'd be those type of guys, those, that, those guys that are still trying to make a team to – the, the the 15th, the 14th, the 13th player, yeah. you know, using his brute strength. Right. But, you know, basketball is a skill game, yeah. not more of power. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure HGH would be very high to, to keep people. Because I don't test for that, right? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't think the NBA tests. I think I have to go back and double check. We did. If you go to Complex Sports, we did a piece uh, last month about why there has been no PED scandal in the NBA. So I encourage you guys to go read that and get more educated on the whole process of the drug testing ins and outs and why there hasn't been a steroid scandal. One, because it's uh, so like like a football. You know, you get tested one time in training camp, and then I'll see your ass next training camp. (laughs) Well, with with NBA, you're getting tested four times a year. So if they are testing for it, you can't do it during the NBA because you, you, you're getting tested four times. But as we said a million times, you have to be an idiot to kind of get caught up in the whole Pretty drug much. program of these, of these, of these leagues. Because they don't want if you're to smart and savvy enough, enough, you can get away with doing just about anything. They don't want to take the stars off. The That's why you don't hear it much in the NBA because as long as you're an addict, yeah. you're in the program. Sure. If you're in the program, all you have to be lower than your last test. So before you get tested, smoke as much as you want. Go and get as high as you want, and then when that test comes, just say, hey, uh, I'm an addict, I need help. I, I just want Now all you have to be is lower than every other test, so you can smoke as much as you want. It's going to be a viral clip. That smoke I- as much as you want. <laughs> <laughs> that wraps up the latest edition of Out of Bounds. For Adam Caporale, give it a ring. It's I'm Pierce Simpson. We'll see you all tomorrow. <laughs> no, but that's just a, like...
it's hard to ban. Like, if you got these guys who's been doing drugs their whole yeah. career, they just can't stop. It's like somebody drinking coffee. If that's what you're addicted to, that's what you're addicted but to. But sometimes yeah. it gets guys so, going, so, right? Huh? Like smoking gets them going for the game? I fucking, I, if you're smoking before the game, you're an idiot. There's a lot. You're getting, if, I, if I found out you were smoking, I, you're getting bar- one-fourth flat. <laughs> Get cooked. <laughs> I'm about to cook this delusional motherfucker right here. 